After watching this video, you will understand what's new in the Ubuntu 24.10 release, and you'll have some insight on whether you want to consider running it on your main machine. Let's take a look. Ubuntu 24.10 comes with the GNOME 47 desktop with a twist. Ubuntu always makes their own tweaks to the desktop, and some of those you can see here, especially with the dock and the way the menus work and the keyboard triggers. So what's special about the GNOME 47 desktop? Well, there are plenty of bug fixes and feature enhancements from the 2410 version, the from the GNOME 46 version. The standout feature in this edition is that in your settings, under appearance, you now have highlight colors. There's one in particular that is special for this release, and that's this warty brown. And this is a throwback to the 4.10 release and the 20th anniversary of Ubuntu. You may be noticing that in previous versions, they did in fact have highlight colors. Well, yes, you're right. This is the version of GNOME that brings this feature as an internal feature. Previously, the folks at Canonical had implemented their own custom solution. So this is going to run more consistent across the board with other distributions using GNOME 47. But we can't stop there. There are more enhancements to take a look at. If we open up our text editor, we'll just make a dummy document. If we go to save this, you're going to notice that you are now getting the file manager as your file save dialog. There are other places that this has changed as well, and some of those dialogs will include floating buttons instead of the sort of connected buttons that have previously existed in places in GNOME. And here is a good example of that new dialog. Previously, the buttons would have been more connected as part of the bottom of the dialog box, and now they are all floating and independent, as you can see here. But there's more to this release. Let's check out the Nautilus File Manager, also known as Files. So as you can see here, this is your typical file manager, and it's got all the normal things that you would expect. The refinements that come into this version are that it has moved your normal folder shortcuts down below this divider bar, trash is above, and so are network and home and some of these other options. Not a huge change, but it is a little bit of a refinement that just makes things look nice. You can also add bookmarks. For instance, say we want to create a new folder in music, I'll call this test sounds. And if you want to create a bookmark for that, then you can just drag that right over here to the side. And if you were somewhere else, in the file structure, you can click on that shortcut and it will take you directly in there. And to get rid of it, right click on it and remove from bookmarks. Pretty simple. Just the features shown so far would make for a nice update. But what about the integrated search? Well, if we take a look at searching in a network folder and watch the bottom right corner of the file manager, if we start typing in, say, 01 underscore, you saw the little flashing searching bar. This doesn't give a full indicator, but what it's trying to do is show that for non-indexed folders, it will display more of a progress bar and let you know why a search might be taking a long time. Now, with this particular example. I wasn't completely successful in demonstrating that, but hopefully you get sort of an idea of what it's meant to be doing. But what else is there? Well, the disk usage analyzer has got an update. So we'll take a look at this and this shows what is being used on your device. So if we drill into the home folder, it will show you different things that are using space on your hard drive. And this whole interface has been given a little bit of refinement this time around just to make it look a little bit nicer. How about some new settings? Something's always changing in settings, right? Let's take a look. Come up to the top and hit the cog for settings. There are several things to look at. Under accessibility, if we take a look at pointing and clicking, there is 
an option here that will allow us to activate windows on hover. So if we enable that, you can see this is the currently activated window. But if we move our mouse over to the settings, that one is now our active. And this is just a nice enhancement that will help people that might otherwise have difficulties using Ubuntu. If we take a look at the power setting right here, there are new suspend times available under power saving. Some of these options are going to be only available on mobile devices, so a laptop or a tablet, and you won't fully see them here. Another enhancement in settings is under online account. And as you can see, there are a few more options here that have existed in previous versions. Uh, you've got your regular Microsoft for email. You've got Microsoft 365, Exchange, and some others. WebDAV is enhanced in this version uh, to do some auto discovery tasks. And the Kerberos, uh, the enterprise authentication, is supposed to be using less power. And all of these are welcome changes, especially for people who have more than the typical use case. Let's for a moment talk about the dock and some of the enhancements that are there. If we come over here to our Firefox icon and you right click on it, if you go to app details, it's going to bring up the app store and you can get details on your snap software. Now, if it's not a snap, it may not give you the same behavior, but this is a welcome change. Also in this version, we've got progress bars when you're doing an update. So if I did in fact have an update for Firefox and I chose to update it from the App Center, instead of the previous behavior where the Firefox icon would disappear from the dock while the update was happening and then reappear when it was done, it is now going to show you a progress bar. Not a huge change, but it is a less jarring behavior for new users and it will make the whole system appear a little bit more refined. All right, if we open up the App Center by itself, you're gonna see a few refinements here. Featured snaps is front and center. There is enhanced touchscreen support. If we scroll down just a little bit, there is in categories, there is a new art and design category for the first time in this release. Now, one other thing that is nice about this release is this manage section and you have a centralized location here to check for updates you can update all and you can manage applications from a centralized location it's a nice touch and so this is showing as version 1.0 of the app center but wait isn't this the anniversary edition of ubuntu yes it is and 20 years so congratulations ubuntu if we take a look at change background. You will see that we have here, in fact, a throwback to the Warty 4.10, which would be October 2004, wallpaper from that version of Ubuntu, modified to have the, the newer logo and 20 years. So that's there if you'd like it. Uh, there are a few others here that are a little bit of a throwback as well. Uh, for instance, this one here has the evolution of the Ubuntu logo. A nice touch to have in this version. And we've already taken a look at the, the brown accent color. So if we look at this and we put it in default mode, uh, it will make the top bar and other parts of the interface a light color, uh, as you can see here. So what else is there in this new release? Well. One of the talked about applications that's new is the security app or security center. Right now, there isn't a whole lot to this, but it's worth mentioning because over time, the intent from Canonical is to continue to enhance this and add more things to it. Right now, this is mostly for app permissions and will require apps to ask for system permissions. This is an experimental feature which you could turn on or off. If you turn it on, it's going to ask for your password. But hey, there has to be something in this new release for the power users and more experienced 
users, doesn't there? Well, yes, you would be right about that. If we launch a terminal, let's do apt-v to start off with. And this is showing that it's running version 2.9.8, which is not quite the 3.0 version that I thought it was going to have, but it's, it's going to be close. So if we did sudo apt update, you're going to see that it's going to have a few little enhancements compared to the previous version. The bottom line is bolded. There's not much here to upgrade at the moment, but we'll run this just the same. And so this is part of the enhanced version of app. If there were more updates, then it would list more things out and it does enhance things by adding color and other niceties that package managers like Yum and DNF and others have had for a while now. So this new version of apt does go a long way in addressing some minor complaints that I've had about app for a while. And that's just that it has looked dated. And this does bring it in line with some of those other package managers that I mentioned. After seeing these changes, how do you know if this is the right Ubuntu release for you? Really only you can decide that, but I'll give you some factors to consider. First, if you're running a business or you're considering doing this on your only machine, you may want to wait. Sticking with the 24.04 LTS, the long-term support version, is really more viable if it's your only machine or you're running a business for the sake of stability. Now, if you're an enthusiast or you just want to test this out on an extra machine, go for it. So far, this has been a solid release. And if you're not reliant on the machine as your only computer, then yes, go ahead and give it a try. Now, what if you're working on a project? That's a little bit more difficult to answer. And you will need to look more closely at the requirements of your project and the versions of various software included in this release of Ubuntu to determine whether this is the right solution for you. Keep in mind that this is a short-term release and is only supported for six months. So if you decide not to do this version, there will be another new release of Ubuntu in April of 2025, October of 2025. And then again in April of 2026, we'll have another long-term support release. Keep that in mind when making the decision. If you do decide to upgrade to this version, you will want to keep those dates in mind because you will want to upgrade to the following versions in order to continue to receive your normal security updates. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. You should now have an understanding of some of the new changes in Ubuntu 2410 and whether this is the right solution for you at this time. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see you next time.